The Blue Jackets had their best October since 2021. Can they make an even better November happen? Who's been the biggest surprise and who have been the MVPs for the Blue Jackets? Talking about all of that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Lockdown Blue Jackets, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your t- team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jeff Foster, hitting you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get things started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Lockdown Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube. Before we uh, get started, I also want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And uh, we're going to get started with, um, I wanted to recap just a little bit of last night's live show. Um, Not a lot, uh, just the bit where I uh, selected my player of the month for the Blue Jackets. This is something that I would like to try and do kind of as the season continues on is every month pick my MVP um no surprise Kromachenko led the team in scoring um has been leading the team in all of the underlying stats has had a really really great uh October um four goals seven assists you love to see it honorable mentions to um Zach Rensky, who I think has been phenomenal uh honorable mention to Sean Monaghan who I also think has been very very good um that whole top line Quite frankly, uh, the Monaghan, Marchenko, Chinakov line is uh, among the best in the entire NHL in terms of generating offense. So, like, you really do love to see it. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about kind of best players by position. I want to talk about best young player um, because it's not who I think you think it might be. Um, and then I want to talk about some of the biggest surprises of the season so far um, in terms of players that are playing well. Uh, and I also want to talk a little bit about how to have a successful November for this team, um, because that's that's the problem, isn't it? You know, it's how do they keep this going? How do they have as good of an, a November as they had of an October? Um, and just to kind of put that into context, the Blue Jackets in um, October, this is, I believe, the like the second best points per- point percentage through October that they've had ever. Um, I'm just pulling up the tweet that I saw that now. Um, but the Blue Jackets have been excellent. Uh, the only team, I believe, that had a better um, better points percentage was the 2020-2021, or possibly the 21-22 team. I can never remember which one it is, um, to talk about what exactly... Um, To talk about what exactly the the Blue Jackets have been doing since then, it's not good. Uh, but they have a a six eleven uh, point percentage through seven games so far this season, or eight games, I believe, actually by now, um, which is extremely extremely good. You know, and I feel like they've had hot starts before. We're not going to like get too in the weeds about this. We are going to get, you know, I talked a little bit about this last night as well, as like cautious optimism, um, getting slightly less cautious uh, because the Blue Jackets won back-to-back games, first of all. Uh, they're on a four-game point streak right now, a win, an overtime loss, and then two uh, wins. Back-to-back excellent performances from Elvis. Um, in two of those games, they scored six goals in each game. Um I'm glad that they broke the the streak of they either score six goals or they lose because that felt unsustainable. So showing that they can win without having to score six goals was really great. Um, but as of right now, the Blue Jackets are sitting on a record of five, three, and one. Um, so five wins, four losses, which like doesn't sound that impressive until you realize like by this time last season, I feel like they were basically dead in the water, you know? Um, it's, it's tough to kind of talk about what a good start they're having because we've seen, yes, I get it. We've seen this before. Um, I'm just pulling up what they are, um, what they, their record was this time last year, because it was 
Roll bad. They were three, four, and two oh, through nine games. They had a 444 points percentage. The only team in their division worse than them were the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, which Penguins are doing real bad again this season, but the Blue Jackets have jumped over um, the Flyers and the Islanders. They're currently sitting just behind the Devils. If you look at points percentage, um, the Devils are currently sitting like at the top of the division right now, but that's because they've played 13 games. Um, and the Blue Jackets have played nine. So they've got four games in hand, uh, and they are five points behind them. So, like, that's very, very catchable. Um, New York, Washington, and Carolina are all doing very well. Um, they've all got points percentage of, like, or 750 or just below 750. So, like, they're winning three quarters of their games. Blue Jackets are winning just, un just over 60% of their games. So, like, again, huge strides forward. Can they keep this going? Um... I think yes, maybe. And that's because of the play of a handful of players. So we've talked a little bit about kind of the team in general, what how, how their October has been. Uh, and, you know, as of like hist in historic, uh, historic terms, I say historic, the team's 25 years old. It's fine. Um, I want to talk about some of the players now, though, that are behind this. And I've talked a little bit about Machenko and how he's, you know, leading the way. Um, he is uh, 11 points in nine games, which I believe is tied for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tied for ninth in league scoring. Um, he's currently listed as 37th because, like, it's it's early in the season, um, you know, but he's he's doing really, really great. Um, leading the way on on the ice, um, becoming a... I don't think this is fair, it's fair to call it like a breakout performance, because I think last season was kind of his breakout performance, but it looks like he's going to be even better this season. And I think he and that top line are a huge part of why the Blue Jackets are succeeding right now. Um, Elite Prospect likes to do these projections. Um, and again, he will almost certainly cool off. But right now he's on pace for a 100 point season, uh, 36 goals, 64 assists. If he plays all 82 games, which I'm going to knock on wood here, I'm going to knock on the desk. It's fine. Um, he's not going to hit 100 points, I don't think. But his career high right now is 42. And I think I think you probably get maybe a 30 goal, 40 assist performance from Kirill Marchenko this season if he keeps it up. Um, and credit as well to his, his line mates. Um, I'm just pulling up what their, their numbers are, um, in terms of like, as a, as a group for, if they've played, um, teams that have played at least 80 minutes together, uh, they are currently second in expected goals, uh, percentage. They are, um, at 72.9%. The only line Above that is a def is a defensive line, and that's a uh, defensive line, a defensive pairing. Uh, that's uh, Shane Gosses Bear and Sean Walker in Carolina. They're at seventy eight point five. In terms of offensive lines, Chinikov, uh, Monahan, Marchenko are way up at the top. Um, in terms of again creating that offense, um, and they're also getting it done defensively as well. Uh, their expected goals against per sixty minutes is also the lowest uh, among all forward groups that have played uh, 80 minutes together. Um, they are leading in expected goals against. And in terms of expected goals for, um, they're not like leading the pack there, but um, they are creating a lot more offense than they are giving up. Um, so that's why their expected goals for per 60 is, uh, they are currently fourth in the league right now because uh, they're not creating as much as some lines so like uh Cooley Heatle uh Kako in New York are leading the way uh in terms of expected for per 60 minutes at 4.83 but that's because they're they are um creating 7.4 expected goals for and they're also allowing 3.7 against so like it's a wider margin but they are giving up a lot more than Monahan and Marchenko and Chinikov are um like they're giving up almost an entire goal less than second place. So again, that line killing it. Absolutely just wrecking house. Um, in terms of defensive pairs, uh, the Blue Jackets are um not near the top of the pack. Um, again, they are Provar and Wensky again are creating a lot of offense. Um, they are also giving up. A lot of offense so they are really kind of 
in the middle, not not the middle of the pack. They are twenty uh, fifth in all defensive pairings um, that have played again a minimum of eighty minutes. Which I mean, defensive pairings play a little bit more than than regular pairings. So if we like scooch the goalposts just a little bit to a uh, hundred minutes. Um, they do jump up to 17th in the league and they've played uh, 135 minutes together, which is, um, again, top 15 in the league in uh, in minutes. So, again, we're going to scooch the goalposts just a little bit more, um, just because I'm always interested to see. Uh, in terms of defensemen who have played more than them. Wernski and Provorov are top five in the league in expected goals percentage. Again, it's because they're creating a lot. They're also giving up more than I would like them to. Um, not like the most, uh, but again, if, if for play, t- duos that have played more than them, uh, six pairs have given up fewer um, and seven or eight, I can't do math on the fly, have given up um, more than them. So, again, that top pairing leading the way, Wierenski doing a fantastic job. He, I, it was really hard not to choose him for my, like, player of the month. But um, I still think Marchenko was was maybe a little bit of a cop-out answer, but I do really still, I, you know, I stand by that. I think Wierenski a very, very close second, and I'm looking for Wierenski to be uh, a big, big player in November. And honestly, like, my prediction might be Wierenski gets player of the month in November. Um going to take a quick break and then when we get back uh, I want to talk about the goaltending a little bit and I want to talk about some of the biggest surprises that have happened um this October for the Blue Jackets in terms of players I didn't expect to step up and who have so that's what's coming up next here on Locked on Blue Jackets first I want to tell you about prize picks what is prize picks well it's the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings prize picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to everyone all you have to do is pick up more or less than at least two plays for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash so you can run your game all season long on prize picks they put their members first so all their withdrawals are fast safe and secure when your picks hit you can get your money in as quick as 15 minutes and they now offer venmo for quick and easy deposits and withdrawals into your account this sports season do you think Kromachenko will get more than one and a half goals uh, this weekend against the Jets and the Capitals? Do you think that Austin Matthews will get more than three and a half goals next week? You can cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this hockey season when you and your crew run your game. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that bonus. It's guaranteed. And they've got weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, price pick discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Once again, that is code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price picks, run your game. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, we're talking about the Blue Jackets in October and how they have basically almost universally uh, exceeded expectations. And I want to talk about the goaltending real quick, um, which it's kind of proving my thesis about this team. Uh, which is that the Blue Jackets don't need Vesna level goaltending to uh, to succeed. They need league average goaltending. And uh, frankly, that's what they're getting right now. Um, in terms of players, again, it's a very small sample size. Tarasov has played five games. He's 3-1-1. One, and one. Mazikins has played four games. He's 2-2-0. Two, two, oh. um, Tarasov at 886 save percentage. Mazikins a 925 save percentage. Um has dropped his GAA to 2.05 after, um, again, two excellent back-to-back performances, uh, allowing one goal on his last 61 shots, um, which, again, to put that in perspective, uh, the 37 shots previous to that, he had allowed seven goals. Uh, or no, excuse me, my math is not mathing. Uh, the previous, I think, 55 shots to that, He'd allowed seven goals. So, like, it's a real night and day. But if they keep getting this Elvis and Tarasov kind of figures it out, again, I don't need the Blue Jackets to have kind of Hellebuck level goaltending. But if they can if they can get, like, let's say, if they can hover around, like, a 900 to a 905 save percentage, like, that to me feels, like, extremely... Um, that feels extremely... 
sustainable, let's say. Uh, do I think that Elvis is going to get, you know, uh, a, a 975 to a, a 100 save percentage every single game? No. But if we can get him to have a 90% save percentage every single game, like the Blue Jackets are going to win more games than they're going to lose. Um, and so after kind of a, a shaky start for the goaltending, it seems like it's leveling out, which is really, really great. Um, again, that's kind of a key to to have a successful November, which we'll talk about in uh, in a second here, is, is what they need to do to kind of keep this rolling. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the biggest surprises for me. Um, and one of those surprises is Jay Christensen, who I talked about a little bit um, in in last night's episode, last night's live show, about like how surprised I was at how well he's doing. Um, and he, again, he's not flashy about it, but he's kind of just quietly making his way through the season. He's got four assists in his last nine, in nine games so far this season. He's averaging 16 and a half minutes of ice time, uh, which if I'm, if I had to guess, would be about six minutes higher than the rest of his average. Um, so yeah, last season he played 12 games, averaged 13, 13. The season before that, 15, 13, a game played 24. And then his rookie se- quote unquote rookie season, he played eight games, averaged 946. Uh, so his career high is 24 games. He's already nine games into this season, has become like a legitimate part of the top four. Um, I think Severson has had some really great games and Severson has had some not so good games, but I think Jay Christensen has really, really impressed me this season um, and was like genuinely a huge surprise to me. Like I thought he'd maybe earned his chance to like be on the roster, you know, maybe play that Andrew Peak role, maybe be the seventh defenseman, but Dean Everson has come in and he said, listen, I don't care what you were last season. I'm going to see what you are this season. He put them in, he put uh, Christensen and Severson together and they've seen a fair amount of success, um, which is really, really fun. And Jake Christensen is, I think, a really good example of sometimes you need to take the time to develop a player in the AHL. Uh, Jake Christensen was a um, undrafted player, uh, is 25 years old, was a stalwart for the Cleveland Monsters the past handful of seasons, um, was a uh, all-star for them last season, and I believe the season before that as well. Um, so again, like absolutely no complaints with how how Jay Christensen is doing. Am I shocked that he's doing this? Yes, extremely. Um, just to again, in terms of his um, in terms of his AHL career, um, fifteen points in twenty eight games his first season with the Monsters, and then he went to forty five and sixty two, thirty four and fifty. 46 in 62 last season. That was his all-star um, appearance. And he was really, really excellent for them. Like he was arguably their best or second best defenseman, depending on, you know, um, what where you where you rate uh, David Juracek, who probably was the best defenseman two seasons ago. But last season, I think it's fair to say Jay Christensen was the best defenseman on this team and potentially the best player on this team. Um, you know, he is excellent. Like, he's just, he's a lot of fun to watch. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. I didn't see it coming at all. You love to see it. Um, We're going to very briefly cover Mathieu Olivier, who, again, is on the most outrageous heater right now. Um, Second on the team in goals with four, tied with Karol Marchenko. He's got six points in nine games on the season. His career high, by the way, is 15 points. So he's already over a third of the way there, and he's done that in nine games. So, like, again, we are rooting for a Mathieu Olivier 30-goal season. It's not going to happen, but, again, a really good example of what can happen when you take a player and put them in the position to succeed. And that's kind of what Everson has done with Olivier. Um, He's not getting a ton of special teams time, necessarily, um, which, frankly, I think is for the best. Um, he's just kind of doing his job and having a, again, I talked about this a little bit in last night's episode, having a third line that can go out there and can, you know, forecheck and can work hard and can also put a, a handful of goals in. Worlds different from last season, where it was basically the top line was, was you know, producing and then the second line was kind of producing and then the third line was there and then the fourth line was an active detriment. So, again, big surprise, Mathieu Olivier. Uh, keep it up is uh is my is my advice to olivier um is he going to regress sure he's not going to keep shooting at uh literally 50 percent um but as of right now 
just having a ton of fun uh, watching watching Olivier play. Um, in terms of other surprise, not necessarily surprise, I guess it was a surprise. Uh, Mikhail Pucha making the team was a surprise. Uh, also, him sticking it out has been a surprise. And I know that he's really benefited from, you know, Jenna's injury, Voronkov's injury, Kent Johnson's injury. Uh, Pucha's made it into the top six. He's been with uh, Fantilli and Sillinger for the past handful of games. Finally got his first NHL goal. I say finally. He's got um, 28 games. So it's not like it was an outrageous uh, length of time to wait. But finally got his first NHL goal uh, against Edmonton. You love to see it. Um, not, again, not getting on a special teams time, but getting plenty of five-on-five five time. And has been uh, not as offensive as I would like for a top six player, but he's putting in the work, and you can see like you can see him getting better and better every game. Um, when he starts shooting the puck more, then I think probably we're going to see way more from Kill Future. He's only got five shots on goal through nine games this season. Like that needs to be higher, um, and I think it probably will. You know, I think. He he's a player that he's got a he's got a really good shot on him. You know he he was very very good in in Finland before he came over to um, North America at the end of not last season the season before that. Um, and he's really fun to watch. So again, not a guy that I had picked to may even make the roster at the start of the season, but he took his opportunity with both hands and he is not letting go. It looks like so another um, another really fun surprise. Quite frankly, um, I'm going to take another quick break. And then I want to talk about how the Blue Jackets can keep this rolling into November. Because, again, we've seen this before. The Blue Jackets have a half decent October and then immediately fall apart in November. So we're going to talk about how to avoid that in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I've got to tell you about FanDuel because... uh, Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. Just find the heaviest favorite you can, put five bucks on it, and if you win, you're going to get $150 that you can spend on whatever you want. And FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all and other sports all in one place. So if you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, you can do live play-by-play, and so much more on the very same page where you place your bet. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Once again you win your first $5 bet, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets that you can put on literally anything your heart desires. Again, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, We're talking about how the Blue Jackets can kind of keep this rolling. And, like, my answer is not super interesting because the thing is they can keep this rolling by just, like, keeping doing what they're doing. You know, like, again, I've said it so many times. I've had other people say it to me. This team is night and day different to last year. Like, it looks like it's a completely different franchise. Um, And I don't know whether that is players i don't know whether that is coaching i don't know whether that's that the players have like bought into the coaching i feel like they never really kind of bought in to uh to what pascal vincent was uh was selling them uh but i am uh gonna be really interested to see how this goes and again if they start to regress to the mean and they stop like scoring a million goals a game, which they've dropped down a little bit. They're now sixth in the league in goals for per game, but they're still scoring 3.89 goals per game. Last season, uh, they topped out at, or well, they didn't top out at, but they finished the season uh, scoring 2.85 goals per game. So on average, they are scoring um, over an entire goal more per game, and they're also allowing over a goal less per game. Like, that's, that's the key here is they are scoring more and they are conceding less. Currently, they are um, allowing uh, 2.78 goals per game, which is good for seventh in the league. Last season, I believe they were the worst team in the league at allowing goals. Um, They were second worst. Uh, The Sharks were worst. Um, But again, they're allowing just over a goal fewer, or just under a goal fewer, excuse excuse me, than they were last season. Um, partially that is, again, they're on a really outrageous shooting heater right now. Um, but they're currently, uh, shooting 28.9 shots per game. Last season, they were averaging 30 shots a game. So they're actually shooting a little bit less. Um, 
but they are allowing so many fewer shots. Um, again, they are allowing 28.3 shots in a game, which is good for 12th best in the league. Only 11 teams allowing fewer. Um, last season, they were allowing teams, um, again, second in the league, allowing teams to have 34 and a half shots a goal. So they are allowing, what's that? Again, quick math. Six shots a goal fewer. Easy math. You know, they, they are giving us more and conceding less. And is their shooting heater going to die down? Probably. They can't continue to shoot at this, again, insane shooting percentage that they're on right now. Um, but even if they slow down a little bit and like regress back to league average, they're still going to be putting up the point and they're still not going to be conceding. Because again, the big issue last year was not that the Blue Jackets couldn't score goals necessarily. It was that they didn't know how to not concede. Um, you know, Blue Jackets uh, scored 234 goals last season and conceded 298. Um, so they conceded, uh, what, over 60 goals more, 64 goals more than they scored. Blue Jackets have currently allowed 10 fewer goals than they've scored. So again, it's just like keeping doing what they're doing. The goaltending looks solid right now. Goaltending is streaky. I assume that they will make me look silly by having a truly terrible um game against either the Jets or the Capitals this weekend, but as of right now, I have no real complaints with the goaltending. Um, again, the offense is getting it done. The defense is getting it done. I would like them to create... I would like that they're creating a lot of offense. It's just not getting to the net as much as I would like. Um, so I would love to see more of these shot attempts actually hit the net. Like, that's what I want them to work on in November. Um, and I think by the end of November, we'll probably have a much better idea about what this team is. Because, you know, like, the the the, the simple math is... If a team is not in a playoff spot by American Thanksgiving, it is highly unlikely they will finish the season in a playoff spot. So if by this time next month, the Blue Jackets are in a playoff spot, the odds are looking good. You know, right now, I believe they are just on the outside looking in of a wild card spot. Um, the Atlantic is is being it's doing some weird things at the minute. Oh, no, the Blue Jackets are in the wild card spot right now. Um they occupy the second wild card spot. They are a point up on uh, the Ottawa Senators, who are five and four. So that overtime loss to Nashville uh, is is doing some really heavy lifting for the Blue Jackets' playoff positioning right now. But again, this time next month, if the Blue Jackets are still here in this wild card spot, I'm willing to be way more optimistic than I currently am. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm interested to see. Again, how the standings fall out, once again, like New Jersey is such an outlier in this division because they've played 13 games, whereas um, almost everyone else in the division has played between 10 and 8. Um, Pittsburgh have played 11. Um, so once the schedule starts to like fit, like even out a little bit, the Blue Jackets will pick up some games. Again, they've got four games in hand on the Devils right now, and the Devils are only four points ahead of them, uh, five points ahead of them. So like, it could be a very different standings look this time next month. So I'm really excited to see that. But the systems are working. It seems like the coaching is working. Um, again, there are still some decisions that I don't love. I still, I'm not sure why Jack Johnson is getting significant ice time at the expense of, of other players. But like, again, I kind of, on the other hand, I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But also it's getting frustrating seeing David Juracek just kind of sitting in the press box, especially because the two games that he played he was really quite good. Like in the game against the Wild, where no one was very good, David Juracek actually was was one of the better Blue Jackets, and he was rewarded with a healthy scratch. So um, would love to Juracek get into some more games. Um, that bottom pairing really, I think, needs some, some, something doing to it. But if our issues right now are, oh, the fourth line isn't creating much offense, and the third pairing of defense is not doing great, like, that's not the worst problem to have, you know? I feel like this time last year, we were like, why is the first line doing this? So, I'm willing to let it be for now. We'll revisit that thought at the end of November, I think. Um, and that's kind of all I've got for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to preview the game against the Jets. Uh, Jets on, again, just the most outrageous heater right now. Um, Connor Hellebuck is doing Connor Hellebuck things, so we'll talk in more detail about that, what the Blue Jackets need to do to face off against the Jets. 
Um, and we'll talk about all of that on, on tomorrow's episode. Thank you for listening to this episode, for making it your first listen of the day every single day. Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jacket. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.